I have been waiting so long to make this video and I'm super excited because we are going to be printing moving art on Polaroid film using this. You guys have seen me paint on damaged film using gouache. You've seen me paint on damaged film using Posca pens, but today it is time to create art specifically for the Polaroid film. The way this works is that you take a photo or video using your smartphone, downloading the Polaroid app, and then printing your photo or video with the Polaroid Lab. Now, I know that the concept of printing photos from your mobile device isn't new, but I love Polaroids, so when I saw this, I had to get it. Especially when I saw that you could print a video. I mean, what is that all about? I am super excited to use it. This is going to be my first time, so hopefully we don't have any issues. So let's get into it. Where's Salt Casey? I need, I need someone to take a photo with. There's Salt Casey, so let's get to taking a video really quick. Salt Casey, how's it going? Um, ow, excuse you. Okay, bye. So Casey, how's it going? Um, ow, excuse you. Okay, bye. <laughs> so I wanted to create something that sort of looped back to the original position of the photo just to have a more seamless look as if it's a photo repeating itself. I could have done a boomerang, but I wanted a little bit longer of a video and just more of a narrative. So now that we have our video, let's get to printing on our Polaroid Lab. I am super excited. So to print our photo, we have to open up the Polaroid app. And from there we go to our Polaroid lab and they have some really cool options. You can choose to print just your basic single photo, or you can do a spread of two, three, four, six, and nine so that you can create a collage or print a large photo across multiple photos, which would be so cool. But for now we are going to do the single option. We're going to add media at the bottom corner. We're going to create, we're going to make it public and then choose our wonderful video of Saw Casey biting my nose. Great. All right, here we go. They have a nice little display showing you exactly how to use it. All right, so here is our Polaroid lab. We'll just take off the top, take our phone without the case and put it on top. The lights blink, letting you know that it is detecting. And once it is lit up, you are ready to go. So let's press the button. Ah, okay. So it needs about 15 minutes, whoops, <laughs> to develop. So we're going to put it upside down and we are just going to wait until it is done. All right, so 15 minutes have passed. Let's take a look at our photo. Oh, cute! It even looks kind of, I thought it would look a little bit more like it was definitely printed on a phone, but it, it really looks like that it's kind of got a vintage-y sort of feel to it. So that's really interesting. I'm a little worried about our, our code at the bottom seems to be skewed a little bit, so I'm a little worried that's not actually going to work, but let's see what happens. So on the app, we are going to go to the AR viewer and hold it over like so. Oh no, I'm afraid that the, the code for real didn't actually, uh oh. Oh no. So unfortunately it seems like the barcode of our photo was cut off a little bit. So let me try again and I will report back to you guys. Okay, another 15 minutes has passed. Hopefully this photo turned out better than the other one. Let's see, and yes it did. Okay, cool. So the barcode is definitely showing a lot better this time. So again, let's go to the app, go to AR Viewer and see what happens. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, there it is. I am now holding a photo just like Harry Potter where there is a video. Oh my gosh, this is so cool and really surreal. So I'm recording on my phone also. So if I flip this around, 
it just looks like I'm holding a photo that's moving. That is so cool. Oh, it looks like if the sun gets too reflective on it, it goes back, but that is so neat. I am, wow, I am super excited. So you can see on one view, you can see them actually just holding a photo, but then on my phone, you can see it's moving. Is that not cool? This is making me so excited to make art or something creative using this uh, technology. So now that I've done a little test and I know how this Polaroid lab works, I am super excited to make art specifically for this and I'm really anxious, so let's get into it. I'm excited. So I thought because we are doing a Polaroid photo with an illustration inside of it, I thought it would be really cute if I drew something as if someone was taking a selfie with a Polaroid camera. It's really interesting that I am printing a illustration in a actual Polaroid film. I think that is so cool. It's one thing to hold an original art in your hand, but I think it's just really interesting to see your art printed on something that isn't expected. And it's just really fun. I think it's just another way to do art. So as I was thinking of who or what I wanted to put in this photo, I was thinking I have several characters. I have Hatch and Alina and Dennis, but maybe I should come up with a new character. And then I realized at the end of Inktober, I drew my Inktober story characters, Ant and Eider, in Polaroid photos. And I thought it would be really cool. Well, at first I was thinking, should I duplicate one of these photos and make it become real? And then I thought it would be more fun if I just drew them taking a selfie. So that's what I ended up going with. So here, here I am drawing Ant and Eider taking a selfie together. Hopefully it'll be super cute. And then when it came to Eider and Ant, I had to think about, did I want to put them in the human world or did I want to put them in Eider's world? So a lot of options. Maybe Eider could be making a silly face. Heck, maybe Ant should be making a silly face too. They could be making silly faces together. Cute! So it looks like Eider and Ant are having fun. So I'm going to go ahead and ink and watercolor this piece. And I will get back to you guys when it is time to print. So this is the only piece that I didn't do an animation for because having the ability to print a Polaroid photo from your phone gives you the ability to print digital photos. So I thought by creating a watercolor illustration, scanning it, put it on my computer, and then putting it on my phone would be a really interesting concept because I own quite a few Polaroid cameras. Some of them have the ability to focus six inches away, but I think because they are vintage cameras, I have a lot of issues with the film just not turning out. And with my basic 600 camera, you have to be six feet away to focus. So that's not good to photograph your art with. Or to be honest, being six feet away isn't great for focusing on a lot of different subjects. So I do miss that aspect and being able to print from your phone really opens that. With the Polaroid Lab, I have the option of scanning something and putting it on my phone and then printing that. So I was really curious just to see what a basic watercolor illustration would look like printed on Polaroid film. Is this something I'm going to want to do in the future? Maybe it will add an effect that I really like? I don't know, but it was something that I just wanted to test out once, see what I felt like, and then maybe continue it or don't because I don't like it. What I was really looking forward to with the Polaroid Lab was I really wanted to see what we could accomplish or just what it would look like if I was able to animate something on top of a photo or even just do a digital animation. Until then, here's a watercolor illustration. how our selfie with Ant and Eider turned out. Ooh, okay, so it's really interesting. It, it really gives me off that Instagram filter vibe, but I just kind of feel like maybe watercolor art, this isn't really the best uh, way to display an illustration, but it's really cute. I think it really 
makes it feel like a selfie a lot more. You can see it kind of looks like her arm is holding the camera and it's really cute, uh, but I think I like the original art more than the Polaroid. So here is our comparison of the two. It's just more bright and vivid and I think overall I like the look of this one, but it is interesting to hold this and it kind of gives off that selfie vibe. It was a fun experiment. So before we jump into actually animating things, I wanted to experiment with art and video, but not so much animation. Basically, I wanted to see what it would be like if I was to put a time lapse of creating a illustration into one of these Polaroids. Because we already did a basic illustration, I wanted to just see what it would look like if I put some really fine details, like close-ups of me painting and watching the watercolor spread around and just having the video itself be sort of, I guess, artistic. Watercolor is really cool in the sense that as it spreads, you get mesmerized and it's just kind of beautiful in its own way. So I wanted to play around with close-ups and video and just seeing what that format did for it. And that is what I ended up playing with with this one. So for this piece, I just did a very basic galaxy watercolor painting because when you paint galaxies, the way the watercolor moves in the water is just really pretty. So I thought that would be the most fun. Also, to be honest, it's just a very colorful subject as well. So I thought printing that on a Polaroid would be nice. Our galaxy watercolor painting in here that is for comparison and here is our Polaroid so obviously it's not as bright and vivid as the original watercolor and we do have a barcode here so let's see what video did I put on this and we're scanning and Ooh, it's a montage of me creating this piece. How exciting. <laughs> you guys already saw me create this piece in a montage, but I thought it'd be really interesting to see how putting a montage of me creating a piece would look on a Polaroid. So that is what we have. Pretty interesting to see, I guess, it in a different format than just watching something on your screen so yeah there you wait what what's that green stuff at the bottom oh we lost the barcode there's a weird green strip at the bottom but that's okay all right well again not sure if that's the best format for this media but it was fun to experiment with so because the whole concept of polaroid photos is that they <laughs> our photos, I knew that I wanted to draw or illustrate or animate on top of a previous photograph. Now the Polaroid lab is targeted towards people who take videos and then they want to turn that video into a memory. So you can print a frame from that video as a photo and then have that code where you can relive that short little 10 second clip. But as an artist, <laughs> As a creative, I knew that I wanted to go an artistic route. Obviously, I wanted to include animation because this is a digital format. It isn't limited to just video, so obviously I was going to animate something. I'm not much of an animator, I will admit. I never practice animation. It's not something that I have the patience for, unfortunately. I would love to animate more, but I just don't have the patience for it. But something that I do really enjoy and thankfully do have the patience for is repeating animation, like short animations that repeat and don't take too much time to make. So when it comes to photographs, I think a very common theme that comes back is ghostly figures that appear in a photograph. It's not something I've ever experienced, but I thought it would be really fun to animate a ghost in one of these photos because that's just so topical, I guess. 
I had a really hard time choosing what photograph to use. And then I saw this photo of me in Australia. I'm at the big drift and there's this beautiful blue sky. And I thought, what if I animated clouds? And one of those clouds came alive, flew around the photo and went back to a cloud position. So I was sold on that idea. I had so much fun animating this. And as a digital GIF, it turned out perfect, but I'm really curious to see how it turns out in the photo. And now for the most anticipated result that I'm excited for, we have our photo draw over. Ooh, okay, so this one turned out super cute. I think this is actually the best format to do this sort of, I guess, phone printing with. Yes, we can just print photos off like you would from your mobile phone, but because we are doing a basically a digital photo print, I think by doing a mix of photo and some digital little details, this is the best way to use this device. So we have a vintagey looking photo, which is what you want from a Polaroid or instant photo. And then we have our drawn aspect, which I think is just so cute and works so well with this. So now it's time to see our animation. All right, here's our photo. And, oh, oh my gosh, I love it. So this is definitely my favorite piece to work on. And I think the result is absolutely adorable and I, I just love it. Look at it. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. It turned out so adorable and I'm just really pleased with the result. Oh, look at it. It's so cute. This one is so successful. I am, I'm really happy with this one. Awesome. Let's move on to something else. So now to fully go into a digital format, we are completely ditching photographs, even though I loved the outcome of our drawn over photo. I thought it would be really interesting to go fully digital with this piece because I was just really curious as to what a digital image would look printed out on Polaroid film, as well as I just wanted to do a fully digital animation for one of our Polaroid tests. So like I mentioned, I am not an animator. I can do some very simple turnarounds. I can do walk cycles. I can do ghosts obviously flying through the sky, nothing complicated. So I wanted to keep this one simple, but effective. I wanted to play with color, mystery, something being revealed in our animation. So I started off with a very simple character drawing of someone in the darkness. I wanted something to be revealed when we scanned our AR. I think it's just really fun to have a photograph of something, but when you scan it with the AR feature, you reveal something completely different in the photo. So I thought it would be really interesting to create this stormy situation where lightning reveals a mysterious, dark and scary creature in the background. You might recognize the shadow. It is my character, Dennis. I guess I just wasn't feeling the most creative and I thought it would be really silly to create a scary version of Dennis, which by the way, if you want a Dennis plushie, they are for sale. I'll put a link in the description if you want to have your own cuddly Dennis plushie. Limited quantity, so get them while you can. Anyways, I wanted to play with color on this photo just because I think it's really cool to have some very bright, colorful Polaroid photographs. And that's it. Let's take a look at our animation. So this is definitely something I'm looking forward to seeing how it turned out. So here we go. Ooh, okay. I actually really like this a lot more than our watercolor illustrations. I think a digital illustration fits a lot more. It kind of gives me like a vintage animation, not panel, cell, like an animation cell vibe because it's kind of weird and vintage looking. It's not as crisp. The colors are kind of wonky and it's, it's a lot more interesting. And I think it turned out really well, like I said, especially compared to the watercolor illustration. With that being said, let's check out our animation. 
Let's see. Oh. Ooh, spooky. That's really fun. Okay, I think this one is a huge success, actually. I think the results are really fun. I think maybe it would have benefited from me having the bright colors and extreme shadows directly printed on the photo itself, but I just wanted the surprise of the monster in the darkness to be what the AR revealed. But other than that, I really like this one. I think this one turned out a lot of fun. Look how cool that is. I can move this. I'm, I'm just still impressed with this whole video thing, even though it's just basic AR stuff. Probably not new technology, but I'm an old lady, so. All right, that's it for our Polaroid experiment. I had so much fun with these, especially this one was my absolute favorite. I think the vibe just turned out really well. And our little cell shaded animation illustration, that one turned out pretty cute too. I had so much fun experimenting with this new art medium. I, I don't know what to call it, but it was really fun. I had so much fun animating and just trying something out new that I wouldn't normally think to make art on. I mean, the Polaroid Lab would recommend. It's pretty cute. The AR is obviously a gimmick, but I think it'd be really cool to go to the city, post a Polaroid with a secret message from me that only one person could get. Maybe one day I'll do that when I'm in a city or something. Who knows? But for now, made some pretty cool art. Pretty cute. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had fun watching this little Polaroid video. And with that, stay golden. Bye. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so I was just going to do our little end card and just show like one moving. I didn't think it could pick up all three animations at once. This is so cool. Okay. Sorry. Didn't mean to disturb the end card, but what the heck? All three are going at once. That is so cool. Okay. I'll end the video now. <laughs> and video with my phone and then printing it.